Good evening, everyone. Welcome to St. Gabriel. Today we gather to offer the holy sacrifice of the Mass on this fourth Sunday in Easter. It is that time again to kick off the annual Catholic Appeal. The theme this year is One Mission, One Family, Together in Christ. You should have received a letter from Archbishop Etchen this week. Please read his letter carefully and consider how each one of us lives out the mission of our church, accompanying one another as disciples in Christ. Envelopes are in the pews for your prayerful reflection. Our parish goal this year is $70,500. Please consider our parish's average last year was $357. All gifts received over our goal will be returned to the parish for our parish's project, roof replace and drainage repair. Please know that we are grateful for your generosity. The parish office will be closed this Thursday for a staff training session. This Thursday, local best-selling author Joe Piscatella will be speaking at St. Gabriel at 5.30 p.m. He will share his own health battles and how he overcame these health challenges. He will introduce his program on how to live a longer, healthier life. His talk will be followed up with a six-week activation led by life coach and personal trainer, Jen Clark. Admission to this program is free. Call the parish office to reserve your seat. We hope to see you there. Jen will share more about this program after these announcements. Please check out the bulletin and the parish website for these and other announcements regarding events going on in the life of St. Gabriel. We ask that you now silence all electronic devices as our liturgy is about to begin. This Mass is offered in thanksgiving for Jim Miller. May he have a happy birthday. And now please welcome Jen Clark. Good evening. She almost said everything that I'm going to say, so this is going to be pretty short. <laughs> My, name is Jen My name is Jen Clark, and I'm a parishioner and ministry leader at St. Nicholas Catholic Church in Gig Harbor. I'm so incredibly excited that our church family and the community is growing together with St. Gabe and Prince of Peace as we are building our Catholic community. God is so very, very good. Our ministry began its foundation last spring in 2023 when Father Mark, responding to the nudge of the Holy Spirit, said, Joe, Jen, Letitia, you three need to meet, share your gifts, and start a ministry. Father Mark was the spark that made it all happen. Hence, Living Your Better Life ministry was born. Our mission at Living Your Better Life is to build and sustain a faith community that uplifts the body and soul across the lifespan. It is with, with great pleasure that on April 25th at 5.30 p.m. in the Parish Hall here at St. Gabe's, Living Your Better Life will host an evening event. This, this, event, will be pre, <clears throat> this event will be presented by our very own parishioner, whom is nationally recognized and a sought-out expert from coast to coast on healthy lifestyle living. In fact, Time Magazine calls him a positive force for healthy changes. He has written over 18 best-selling books, hosted three PBS television specials on heart health, and has been a guest expert on WebMD. As a spokesperson for a healthy lifestyle, he's been interviewed on The Today Show, CNN, Good Morning America, and Fox News. His newest book, Strong Heart, Sharp Mind, is a book that examines the link between heart disease and Alzheimer's. Please, please come and join an evening event with our very own Joe Piscatella. Joe will be speaking to effective exercise, stress management, better sleep, social connections, and how to ward off heart disease and Alzheimer's. Joe is your inspiration. I, me, Jen, I'm your activation. As a life coach and personal trainer, and after serving t over 20 years as a high school counselor, my DNA comes alive when I share my passion for health and wellness. I cannot wait to share my knowledge, wis wisdom, and passion with each and every one of you. I will host a six-week follow-up program here at St. Gabe's following the evening event every Friday at 5.30 p.m. starting May 3rd through June 7th. It's free and all are welcome. Here we'll, we will activate the principles of healthy lifestyle living. Please email or call Michael Zazel to save your seat. It is free, but we need to know how many seats to put out. There's also going to be a QR code in the bulletin to register. God bless you all. Thank you so very, very much, and make it a great evening. Thank you.
I'd like to mention that we also will be doing a sprinkling rite tonight, and the song we will be singing is number 945, number 945 in your hymnals. That will be called I Saw Water Flowing. But now let's join in the King of Love My Shepherd Is. Please rise. The King of love, my shepherd is, whose goodness fills me never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. Where streams With gentle care, he leads me. And where the verdant pastures grow, with heavenly food he feeds me. Perverse and foolish I have strayed, but yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulder gently laid, and home rejoicing brought me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with your spirit. We're to welcome everyone to our celebration of Eucharist uh, this evening to our visitors with us. We are very happy that you join our parish community as we, the church ushers us into this fourth uh, week uh, of Easter and popularly known as the Good Shepherd, Good Shepherd uh, Week. So, indeed, the Lord Jesus is our Good Shepherd, Psalm 23rd, echo for us. So we have a lot of uh, Good Shepherd in our lives that form and shape us until now beside the Lord Jesus. So we in gratitude for those Good Shepherd and and in Easter, we are challenged to be good shepherd ourselves to the flock that the Lord Jesus entrusts to each and every one of us. And so celebrating this is that gift of new life in, during Easter season so that through baptism that we live in the Lord with new life again. So let's open our hearts and mind and allow the water of this new life to touch us once again. Number 945 in Breaking Bread. 945. Holy 
darkness into light. Alleluia. 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 Praise, Praise the, the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give. of the world have mercy on us you take away the sins of the world receive our prayer you are seated at the right hand of the father have mercy Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A, re a reading from a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, "Leaders of the people and elders, if we are examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved." then all of you and all of the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord.
stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in men. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. I will give thanks to you for you have answered me and have become my savior. The stone which has the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my Savior. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his kindness endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall, he has not what we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and my know. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A higher man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own see a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fall. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. asked all the priests from the Archdiocese of Seattle to come back from our three-day retreat and workshop to help us to get a head start on the partners of the gospel. You know, so it was wonderful for us to, to have this time together, not just how to do it, but to also focus on who it is that helped us to do it and imitating, you know, the one who knows and whom ministry that we continue to, to do with God's people, namely the Good Shepherd. So our gathering place was our own seminaries, the minor seminary of St. Edward, then, you know, not too far, about half a mile is the School of Theology. So uh, I, you know, most of our priests in the Archdiocese now had not gone to seminary in these two places. You know, those who have pretty much re have retired. But it's just a wonderful to visit to the places, the place where a lot of these uh, uh, years of, um, you know, educations and forming you know, for the priests here in the archdiocese. You know, I, and we are so thrilled to be able to, to do that. Because I, you know, I came, uh, when I first came to the United States, I remember the kingdom. But the kingdom is no more, right? They really explored it and built a new thing. You know, coming back to see, even though we as young priests never been educated in these minor and and a major seminary in Kenmore, Washington, you know, at the end of the beautiful uh, Lake Washington area, it's still there. Kind of a good reminder of uh, what it means, you know, for us to share something very historic and common. You know, so I was able to, to see a lot of priests. Uh, so certainly, you know, see uh, Father of Mark Woodsman and Father Phil Ritha, you know, the two uh, uh, priests that will be a part of, of our uh, new family parish. You know, so it's good to, to see everybody kind of we're on the same boat <laughs> to a ministry direction that, you know, we hadn't trained for, but at least 
we gather to, to help us to, to begin something anew again. Just like Easter season, right? Easter season is supposed to be new life. So how can we, you know, experience and live this new life? So it was a good opportunity for all of us, you know, to be together in, in that point. So we kind of, in some way, pray together, <laughs> share our dream together, you know, and ask the Lord God to help us to be the good shepherds. Today, traditionally, is a, a good shepherd Sunday, which means you know, we pray for good shepherding, but also, you know, pray for vocation, which is, you know, our Christian ministry, not just for the ordained or the religious life, but for each and every one of us who have been baptized into new life in Christ. we following and imitating, you know, the one that lead and guide us and call us to new life and call us to be good shepherds for the flock that we've been entrusted to. So in some way, you know, this is what we are called to in a very real sense. So I want you to bring you to this white book, you know, 50 day, we kind of halfway through, right? So just want to point out to you that this is the fourth week of uh, Easter season. Remember the first Easter was the empty tomb, right? What's the second week of Easter? You know, Jesus appeared to a very fearful group of apostles, locked themselves in the room, right? Last week was the story of Luke's gospel, you know, about the two disciples on the way to Emmaus and how they recognized Jesus. Where? In the breaking of the bread, right? You know, those are... Easter story, not very, you know, <laughs> convincing or empowering, right? And then today, what do we have? The Good Shepherd. So this Easter story ended very quickly, right? So if you've been reading this white book, you have finished Matthew account of the Easter story, it's done with. And we only halfway through, so what we're gonna do for the rest of the 50 days? So you see how, how it is. If you've been reading carefully from this white book, it tells you that Matthew doesn't have the post-resurrection. So that's why it ends when other, uh, gospel account continue on a little little further on the post resurrection, but Matthew ended. You know that I was, I'm with you until the end of time. Just as how Matthew begins, right? The story of Jesus' birth. What was Jesus' name? They call him the E. Emmanuel. What's Emmanuel mean? God's with us. So Matthew ended, I will be with you until the end of time. Isn't that interesting? And that's all we got about the Easter account. You know, so if you think Easter is easy and it's all there, we'll be deadly wrong because it's not very, you know, affirming and easy to catch the mystery of Easter, the risen Christ. So now we've already moved into not Easter, but story that popularly have known that our God is a good shepherd. So where do we find this theme in, in the scriptures? As I mentioned at the beginning, where do we find you know, everybody know this psalm, Psalm 23rd, right? 
I know our brothers and sister Protestants could recite this. So are you remember much <laughs> of this song, which is, The Lord is my shepherd. You know, what does that mean? Not only the shepherd, but the good shepherd. Where the gospel of John chapter 3 today, you know, the chapter, the passage we just heard from John gospel, that our, not only God is our shepherd, but, you know, John affirmed that Jesus is our good shepherd. So how does the gospel we just heard augment it? What does that mean to be good shepherd? So let you think about that. What does that mean to be good shepherd as John depicted in the gospel today? He said, I am the good shepherd. What's the first thing? The good shepherd lay down his life for his flock. The good shepherd lay down his life for his flock. You know, so that's incredible, right? Perhaps we are in the military area here, so what the soldier would be willing to do? To lay down their lives for something is so valuable. At least we know something about, you know, this claim of John about Jesus the Good Shepherd, willing to lay down his life. But you know, let's just ask that question a little bit deeper. Did God die for you and I, for us? See? It's easy to say, but if we really poke at this belief, did God die for you and I? The answer is yes. God in his son Jesus died for you and I and all humanity. Do we believe in this? It's not easy to believe, right? It's easy to say it. But do we really believe in this? So I want you to take you back to the article last week, Sunday. April 14, right? Remember you, you read this uh, article, How Can God? And I want to quote from this a little bit. When people, this is the, the third paragraph on that article, you can go back and reflect on it again. This is what it said. When people are struggle with their faith, their most repeated question is something like, how can God be a good God and let my child die? That's one of the questionable when people said, we believe in a God who is really good. How can he be good and let my child die? That's one articulation. Another one is, how can God be a good God and let, and let my grandmother suffer? That's the second articulation. The third one is, how can God be a good God and let famine and starvation happen? And you can add more when we are struggling to look at our lives, our world, and said, how can God be a good God if? I'm sure you can fill in the blank until the cow comes home and you still have, you know, way to ask, is our God a good God? If we claim or believe our God is a good shepherd, a good God, then what happened? Did God die for us? Did God suffer for us? Did God go to the depths of the anguish of human circumstances? 
You see, it's not just as ask, asking the question, but actually allow the reality of what we believe to sink in not only our lives, but our world situation. And let that be, you know, a starting point of, you know, of our belief in the risen law, in a God that is articulated as good. No wonder we don't have, we don't just have a Friday, but what, what do we have? A good Friday. What happened on Good Friday? Jesus died so that we can live. And that's the belief that the church in the past or our time of today continue to struggle as we try to celebrate and live the mystery of our God. And that's why, you know, Jen Clark was uh, introduced a, a beautiful program today that hopefully our three community in this new parish community will join together. You know, what's, what's the title of this? How to live a longer and, you know, healthier life. You know, it does have that ring of an uh, Easter theme, isn't it? Not that we just living or passing through, but how can we believe and live a healthier, a longer and healthier life because Jesus has died and rise again. That will continue to be, you know, what Christianity, our Christian faith offer, not only for us today, but for the whole world. Otherwise, you know, why even celebrate Easter? Because it means for us no longer just brush our little bed and call it new. No, it doesn't happen that way. But it's a completely a new beginning, a life, that, a life to live as we truly believe. You know, that God indeed has suffered and died and offered us that gift of new life. Otherwise, it doesn't really, you know, offer much. So the, our gospel today indeed have said that. And first reading today, Acts of Apostle, chapter 4, St. Peter said, there's no other name except Jesus who died for us, who rise again to give us hope. You know, we're not a good organization as Christian. We believe in a person. And the person is the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who died and offer us. We follow him. We allow Jesus to be our good shepherd. So the gospel said at least one criteria, a good shepherd is the one who is willing to die for us. What's the second articulation on the gospel we just heard. The good shepherd is the one who call us. He knows us. He's the good shepherd who knows his flock and his flock knows him. And that's the challenge, isn't it? You know, then we're beginning to reflect on those gospel story of the risen Christ. How does Mary Magdalene know that it was Jesus, the risen Christ? Because she had no idea, right? She was so fearful of, of the empty tomb. She was worried that people was there at the empty tomb. She was asking even Jesus when she didn't know did you take the body of my teacher? Where did you hide it so we can t take it back? How did she recognize the risen Christ? Yeah, Jesus called her and she recognized his voice. That's the good shepherd for Mary Magdalene. Right? Without... 
Jesus calling her by name, she wouldn't recognize it. She wasn't able to do that. She saw him, body and everything. You know, that the good shepherd knows his flock. He knows the voice of each one of us to call us by name, just like Mary Magdalene did. How does that happen? Because, you know, once in baptism, in baptism, the church will ask, what do you give in this child name? So the church baptized this person, whoever the name is, by Mary Magdalene, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. She, Jesus, our God, called us at the beginning of our lives by name, whether we realize it or not. And because he knows us by name, that's why we can recognize when God called us. Or when we ourselves, we wonder if Jesus know me by name. Why don't you try to live that reality? Call to see if Jesus ever answer your call. You risking to do that? Because you wonder if God or his son Jesus knew you personally. And allow that faith in this Easter season because that's also the test of the good shepherd. I know my and my know me. So we're not talking about just some one individual, or not only individually, but collectively as well. How are we able to respond to the voice of the good shepherds who not only lead and guide us, but call us and then we call to the good shepherds as well. And that's why we're here, collectively, as the body of Christ. So from the empty tomb <laughs> to Jesus' appearance to his disciple and recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread, the church continue to call us forward to this, this mystery in the very life that we live, the good shepherd. You know, we know who are the good shepherd, first from the Lord and the good shepherd that, you know, that lead our lives, to lead us to this point. And now that good shepherd is challenging you and I to be good shepherd to the flock that entrust to us, whatever the flock that my means for you and I in this period, in this time, in this Easter season. And that's why when we as a priest come together, you know, we are assigned to a flock that we, have, we haven't met. We don't know. And yet, that's the challenge for us, you know, to be a pastor, to be a leader. That's what we need to continue to do. You know, we know how to have some experience. But not, not all the flocks are the same way, you know. It's not like one side fit all. We all live with different circumstances, different geographical area, you know. I'm moving to a much more kind of city life. It's certainly, you know, to be an effective pastor in the future, I just can't rely on what I have learned, although that's the beginning point. But I certainly can rely on what it means to live this Easter time, you know, what it means at the core of Jesus' message, that we respond to the one that call us and help us so that, you know, that's why we had on retreat, <laughs> once again, to allow us to see what our lives is about, what does that mean to be a priest, what it means to be a pastor, and what it means to to gather God's people and, and ask you, each one of you also, be a good shepherd, you know, to, to the flock that entrust to you so that together, you know, we can live this reality and help shape and form the people of God in the ways that our good shepherd 
you know, has shown us the way. And we have to, to have the heart of that good shepherd, you know, if we're going to live this Easter in a more fuller way. So that's what we are calling to do, you know, to help continue and further the ministry that Jesus has called us to do. So at this time, I want to invite our very quiet director, Lori, to speak a little bit about the ministry that obviously for, for her and as she call you to respond with that, yes, to build up the body of Christ if you want to do that. Hello again. My name is Lori Samora, and for the past 14 months, it has been my privilege to be the music director here at St. Gabriel. Pope Francis said these inspiring words, Liturgical and sacred music can be a powerful instrument of evangelization because it gives people a glimpse of the beauty of heaven. What a blessing to have that as my mission statement. I take that mission very seriously, and I strive to fill our liturgies with music that you all can sing and be inspired by. I've been working to build a music program, and I do believe that we have made some impressive progress. Besides introducing and integrating new music into our liturgies, we have a vibrant children's choir for students in kindergarten through fifth grade, a youth choir for students in grades six through 12, an adult choir, a philam choir, and a number of cantors and accompanists at St. Gabriel who have been joyfully providing and leading music to help give everyone here that glimpse of heaven. If you have musical talent, and by that, I mean anywhere in the range from being able to carry a tune to being a virtuoso, there's a place for you here. I promise you, I don't require any long-term commitments or extensive musical theory knowledge, which can sometimes be the reasons people don't come forward to share their talents. We're all busy people, and I honor that. If you're able to sing for one, some, or all of the liturgies and musical events throughout the year, you are welcome to join us as your schedule allows. If you are a soloist and would be able to sing as a cantor once a month or a few times a year, you are welcome. If you play an instrument, please let me know. You are most welcome. We are also still looking for dedicated people with a good musical ear to help run our sound system. This is a very important ministry and training is provided. Again, no long-term commitments are required. Pope Francis also said this, liturgical songs and sacred music, especially in the celebration of the Eucharist, make it clear that we are one body and sing one faith with one voice. I truly appreciate all of you being a part of that one voice, whether it's from the pew or as part of the choir. This is your personal invitation to share your musical gifts with the St. Gabriel community. If you've ever thought about being part of the music ministry, make this the year that you come forward and say yes. I will be available after mass in the choir area here, and I'd love to meet you, answer any questions you might have, and welcome your feedback and suggestions. Thank you. Well, thank you, Lori. Do you want to pray more? Come to sing. I think the, say, the, the, the common saying is that singing is pray twice because you do it twice. <laughs> you practice and then you sing. You know, that's one way to do that. Uh, is there someone here also talked about the, uh, the coffee thing? Probably not. Maybe not at this Mass, but probably tomorrow. No, okay. So, thank you, Orin. I hope that you, uh, so every week we highlight certain ministry, you know, so, so that we can respond to the Good Shepherd voice. Lori uh, is talking about the ministry of, of singing, of praising God for whatever talents that our God has given to our community. And that's important because without the participation, you know, we'll be missing God's gift in our, the body of Christ here at St. Gabriel. So I invite you to please stand and let us also live the reality of the Good Shepherd by professing in our Good Shepherd who is God sent Jesus Christ. And so on page nine, we confess together saying, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe, I believe in, in one, one Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward, forward to, to the, the resurrection, resurrection of the, of the dead, dead and the life of the world, the world to, come. to come. Amen. Amen. Let us bring our needs before God, confident that he will listen to us, because we are members of the flock of Christ. For the leaders of the church, that in their service to others, they may be inspired by the example of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who hold public office, that they be blessed with a spirit of service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the generosity throughout our church as we discern our participation in this year's annual Catholic appeal and share in our mission to encounter Jesus and accompany one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who were welcomed into the church during, during the Easter vigil and those receiving sacraments of initiation during this springtime, that they know resilience in the face of the challenges of living their every deepening. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear For those who suffer from sickness and weakness, that they will find courage in God's faithfulness, especially Mary Belito, Brenda Holen, Cicely Nance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our deceased relatives and friends, especially Bob Alexander and Ed Cox, that Christ, the Good Shepherd, may bring them to the green pastures of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken or unspoken. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of power and love, grant that we who have experienced the love of Christ, the Good Shepherd, may be generous and sharing that love with others. We ask this to Christ, our Lord and Shepherd, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated as we prepare our gifts. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadow and leads me to the quiet streams. He restores my soul and he leads me in the paths that are right. Lord, you are my shepherd, you are my friend. I want to follow you always, just to follow my friend. And when the road leads to darkness, shall walk there unafraid. Even when death is close, I have courage, for your health is there. You are close beside me with comfort. You are guiding my way. Lord, you are my shepherd. You are my friend. I want to follow you always. Just 
just to follow my friend. In love you make me a banquet for my walk there on the sea. You make me welcome pouring down honor from your mighty hand. And this joy fills me with gladness it is too much to bear. Lord, you are my shepherd. You are my friend. I want to follow you always, just to follow my friend. Your goodness always is with me, and your mercy I know your loving kindness strengthens me always as I go through life. I shall dwell in your presence forever, giving praise to your name. Lord, you are my shepherd, you are my friend. I want to follow you just to follow my friend. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mystery, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. For through Christ, the children of life rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heaven kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with a jealous host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending thou your spirit upon them, light to do for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, Give us to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and one small giving thanks. He gave us to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will pour out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly, we pray, that partaken of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Archbishop, your Savior, Frank, our auxiliary Bishop, Peter, our retired Bishop, with all the Bishop, with the clergy, and all of your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles, Saint Gabriel, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. our good shepherd. May we imitate our good shepherd to be good shepherd ourselves. With confidence we pray as Jesus hath taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and for. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another some sign of Christ's peace. This be with you, Jim. This be with you, Father. This be with you, Richard. This be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God, the risen Christ, the good shepherd, who take away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Good Shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep, and willingly died for his flock. Alleluia. The Good Shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep. searched my heart and you know when I sit and when I stand your hand is upon me protecting me from death keeping me from harm oh from your love if I climb to the heavens you are there if I fly to the sunrise or sail beyond the sea still I'd find you there oh Lord I know you are near Standing always at my side, you guard me from the fall, and you lead me in ways everlasting. Mm -hmm. 
just a few uh, echoes from what you have heard. First of all, Lori is in uh, doing the uh, the the uh, uh, New American Idol, but much easier, <laughs> as he had said. You come and try it out. No commitment for long term, but try it out to see if you you like to to pray in a different ways, right? You never know, you know, that what God has given uh, to, to each one of us until we try. At least that, uh, I think, the message, uh, invitation to do just that. So see, Laurie, or you encourage others. You might not be yourself, but you recognize other people who have gift of singing. They can contribute to the praising of God, you know. Encourage them or talk to Laurie as well, too, so we can uh, make it happen. But also, um, uh, uh, Jen Clark had made that announcement. So the talk is this coming Thursday. I think there's some flyer, just more information <laughs> out in the entrance that if you like to come, you know, it's a talk to begin with, but they follow up with like six weeks, really work on how you can live, you know, longer and much healthier and more, you know, meaningful from that perspective. So. Uh, and then thirdly is, uh, you know, uh, we uh, kick off our annual Catholic Bill today, kind of announce for you. Hopefully you get the material. I know I get, you know, an, a mailing uh, from Archbishop, so, because uh, I gone all week, I just uh, got it today, so I know at least I got it. So hopefully you get the material as well, too. Uh, so we begin uh, annual Catholic Appeal uh, next week. Uh, next weekend. I just want you to, to keep uh, Jarek uh, there um, in your prayer. He had a, a, a pretty uh, substantial surgery uh, Tuesday. He will be uh, reanointed, company with his, uh, his wife Amy there. So I just want at least to, to keep Jarek in your, in your prayer. Pray for a successful surgery uh, this Tuesday. Lastly, you know, a little stormy today, wasn't it? I was surprised that I was on the road anointing, you know, a parishioner, and all of a sudden it's like dust storm. It kind of accumulates all of that. So we can bear with that because guess what? What's the mariner have to do? <laughs> they have a cancel game yesterday because snow. snow. It's still snowing, a lot of snow on the ground in Colorado. So if you get a glance of the game, they dress like you know, they're getting ready for a ski trip. <laughs> so a little dust storm wouldn't be hurting us so much, but you're a mariner. So <laughs> uh, hope you have a wonderful week, everyone. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pasture the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your son, Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, give praise to his name. Jesus is Lord of all the earth. He is the King of creation. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. Give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Give praise to his name. Spread the good news o'er all the earth. Jesus has died and has risen. Alleluia, Alleluia. Give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Give praise to his name. We have been crucified with Christ. Now we shall live forever. Alleluia, Alleluia. Give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Give praise to 